This video is sponsored by Gate.io. If you set an account up using the link in the description, you'll get 25% back on all your spot and futures fees for life. Gate.io. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's get started then, shall we, on this morning's video. It's a bit of a late start, so I apologise for that, but you know, things happen. You know, kids, haircut, sending stuff on eBay. Right, so let's have a little look at what's going on over here. This is S&P, this is the futures market, basically a CFD traded futures market. So at the moment we're up, up to um, well, 0.72%, fair enough, moving up towards and maybe even above 4,000 in the pre-market. Fair enough, that's nice, it's all good. All part of this um ascending channel ascending channels do often break down i have to say but for the moment it looks like we're going to be trending up towards the uh well towards the top area call it the bollinger band maybe call it the actual uh trend line itself uh, 4070 thereabouts give or take euro having a bit of a well a non-day really but unchanged effectively but still very much in the uptrend trending back up towards its 109.4 109.5 um, again you know, nothing more than a golden cross retest and a V-shaped recovery like everything else is still doing that. Fundamentals will match this until something changes with the ECB or European banks really start to fail and then they're going to have to do something to change that. But for the moment, technicals look reasonable. We'll be looking for a green portion of the cloud for a pump on this one uh, at some point, maybe towards the end of this week. So maybe we even get a signal, a pump signal that's generated to, to suggest, you know, this area breaks. And then we move up to much higher, much higher areas. I say, you know, 111 to maybe around 114.15 or so, which should be the next, the next level. Easily can do that. Gold, again, just chilling out after its uh, V-shaped recovery uh, from uh, the, again, same as all the other charts, really. The, the pullback into the Golden Cross and then the V-shaped recovery. Just like Bitcoin, just like everything else, these are the, this, you know, this is the setup that we've, we've thought about on everything. This is why it's been such a good couple of, well, two, three weeks now because we waited for the pullback into these areas. We got those. We got the V-shaped recovery. We got the, got the trade. So that's working exactly as expected. And then just to finish, uh, this is total market cap excluding Bitcoin, but including Ethereum. Uh, not on the weekly. We want to have a look on the daily. <clears throat> so recognize what I've said about all these charts. Maybe not the S&P, but Euro, um, Golden Cross, pull back into it, push up. Gold, Golden Cross, down into it, push up. Even Bitcoin, uh, Golden Cross, push down into it. This was the simple moving average, push up. Uh, I mean, it's just over and over and over again. Uh, but now let's have a look at the total market cap. Um, and we've got ourselves a golden cross down into it, push up. And then to boot, green portion of the cloud, cross down here, cheeky span above cloud, price action above cloud. That's a pump signal right there. Now, does this mean that it, uh, the alts will outperform Bitcoin? It doesn't mean that. But what it means is that altcoins should start to will, will gain. Is this going to be an alt season? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. We're halfway through my predicted areas of alt season territory. So scaled in for the first point here, second point over here. We're now bouncing on a ten exponential on a bullish chart. So let's just you know, let's just give it credit for what it is. This is a trend signal this time round. So what we've got is a, uh, a cross above the cloud, cheeky span above price and price action above cloud so another way of playing the uh, the itchy cloud and this would say we're in a trend we're in a, an, we're in an uptrend and this uptrend will continue until proven otherwise obviously we all know the drill cheeky span touch price action blue cross red blah 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 and um, and obviously that that's good to go until that happens uh, and that could be a way to think about maybe trading this for maybe a better alt season setup uh, but at the moment, yeah, we're still we're still watching and waiting, and we've got the total market cap two with a bullish setup with a pump on it as well. So it's not it's not over for the alt season, but for the moment, obviously, we're bouncing on that ten exponential with a bullish chart. So uh, we can continue to scale in towards the top of this box, and then maybe, like I say, I'm prepared to scale in fifty percent into alts by the you know no more than fifty percent of of, my, of the Bitcoin I bought at twenty one thousand five hundred. Uh, you know that just that that's just not on the on the table so i'm 20 percent in at the moment i'll go 30 percent here and i think i'll allocate the next 20 percent when we actually get the cancellation of this trend signal which is not going to be for a little while uh, for what could be an, an alt season based on that signal and again that's not a short signal that's a that's the uptrend finished signal which you might think well if the uptrend's finished does that mean short doesn't mean that doesn't mean that it means uh, it's a take profit if anything 
Anyway, so that's enough of that. So alts looking reasonable with this kind of setup. So there should be some upside seen now um, based on what we've got on the um, on the total market cap, excluding Bitcoin, to the tune of about 11 to 12 percent. Uh, to begin with and then after that probably around 54 percent that's the, they're the top targets on this current setup that we've got right now and uh, anything more would be a bonus but that's what we should be targeting small cap alts would obviously benefit more if we gain traction on that so let's just admire bitcoin so yesterday we were talking about how you know the bulls do generally have the upper hand coming down to this bottom area and bouncing from it then we started to reclaim sort of bit by bit moving averages very slow and i woke up this morning and we've broken out of this descending triangle so that's all very good it's all very nice waiting for a green portion of the cloud to continue this for a further pump um also you know as i was saying yesterday when you get towards the end of an apex whichever way it breaks down um you know if we're more than 75 percent of the way through which this looks to be more along the lines of about 90 percent of the way through it often results in a fake out or a fake fake uh, break fake breakdown so we kind of got that as well so uh, you know in all you know in all fairness I wasn't really calling anything yesterday, but it did look like we were more likely to recover. And then on the Patreon last night, you know, I went into a few details of it, just in summary about how the system, you know, the stocks, the commodities, yeah, the financial system, at least in America, is not going to collapse anytime soon, right? It's just not going to happen. Yeah, okay it just isn't going to happen the inflows are enormous They're partly to do with the fact that the dixie is and the dollar is dropping uh then we've got some sketchy situation taking place with banks people are unsure about where to even keep their devalued dollar so it's just going back into stocks commodities assets of all kinds so they're being forced and people are being forced to allocate funds similar to what happened when there was that uh, de-pegging of uh, USDC, you know, all those sort of things. They, they cause fear. What are you going to do? You know, what's the lesser of two is stick it into whatever, you know, so that seems to be, well, that's not seems to be, that is what's happening. Um, plus the Fed will not allow for a collapse. They're not going to allow it. It's just not on, it's just not something that they will allow. Okay, the bear market that we've seen is very much a, a bear market, a controlled bear market, and uh, and it, yeah, they've got control over the markets. The Fed has, not the ECB, not the Bank of England, the Fed. So don't expect to crash anytime soon. I know that that's a very popular thing to say, and of course you're going to get volatility because this is Bitcoin, this is crypto, but a crash, not seeing it, really do not see why that would happen. So. Like I said, we woke up this morning to find ourselves peaking with, um, you know, very potentially seeing a new high. So where is the next level that we're going to go to on Bitcoin? Well, it's into the 30s, to be honest with you. It's that targeted area of around, you know, we'll just call it lower 30s. On a, on a horizontal basis, we've got this 31 and a half sort of area, which is a bit messy. On a monthly, we've got just around the 33, which is the Bollinger Band Center here. The monthly 20, which is three, sorry, 33,389 <laughs> to be precise. And that would be the next major area as far as uh, moving averages and Bollinger Bands and, and all that is concerned. And it's not unlikely at all. It's not unlikely. We're turning up on momentum, turning up on all oscillators, ready for that move. All right, ready for that move. Now, just a quick little anecdote on uh, <laughs> there's XRP. We did close below there last night and we powered straight through. We were speculating whether or not the I mean, I thought yesterday I said, look, this is a resistance. We should treat it as a resistance. But uh, when I was doing the stream last night, I was saying, look, I'd like to see it pull back here for anyone to get another opportunity to buy lower. The first pump that we got on this channel. I said, look, it was around here. I said, look, I think it's going to, we got a four hourly pump signal. If it breaks out of the descending triangle, it's going to pump up. Uh, and then on that stream that night, I said, it's very likely to pull back down. Probably a 200 exponential at some point down the line happened basically the next day. That was the entry point. Now what we're seeing is the rinse and repeat XRP market cycle behavior. So this is going to be tempting for all of you to FOMO into this. Don't do it. All right. The thing with XRP is you, you've got to respect it the whole time. If you don't respect it, you don't deserve the pump, right? You don't, <laughs> you don't deserve the pump if you don't respect it when it's low. You know, you've got to love it when it's when it's down. Um, otherwise, you'll never you'll never get a chance to, to benefit from its highs. It's pumping and it will continue to pump, in my opinion. But just do not FOMO. You only should think about buying retests of a 200 exponential. And that was done the day after this major pump. So just leave it alone now if you don't have it 
just accept you missed it. That's no big deal. There's going to be plenty of opportunities across the board for everything um, in this market, which I think is going to continue to trend up for a little while yet. You know, Bitcoin to you know into the 30s could even see that today. Could even see that today. And again, for all the people who do the Patreon, you know, all the crypto associated stocks are probably going to continue to run with with Bitcoin. We looked at lots of we've looked at these in the past. You know, anything from Coinbase to was it Pi Eight? No, Hut Eight Mining. Um, yeah, you know, was it Clean Spark? All all these sort of crypto associated stocks. You're probably going to see decent rallies on them uh, until we reach a peak, really. And I, I don't know if you've noticed it, but some of those stocks they do rally with Bitcoin. They act like altcoins. You know, they are they move way harder than uh, than bitcoin itself so bitcoin is almost an indicator for those kind of stocks uh, for the most part again you're trading one asset with association with another so you know maybe if, if you're looking to do that maybe not maybe just do derivatives on bitcoin if if you're good with risk management but either way things are looking quite good we're not going to have a crash not as we see it right now there's no reason for a crash and um, not really seeing a crash, although a consolidation at a higher level is likely, and that might be a more of a long drawn out consolidation where we reach up into these 30s areas, these lower 30s, we might actually at that point consolidate down to the lower 20s. But for the moment, not really seeing that, there's no reason for that, we're not peaking, we're, we're, if, if anything, you know, we could even go higher, we could even move towards 37 or 38 before we consolidate greatly, so... But again, you know, like I say, I know this is bullish. I've been bullish, bullish for a little while. The, the chart is relatively good. We speculate on pullbacks and where they could go down to, but everything still seems pretty good to go. And if we do finally get that rotation from altcoin into altcoins as well, then yeah, altcoins are going to run quite hard uh, themselves. The markets, all markets, do seem pretty decent in all fairness. But, you know, sweeping statement, but they do. That matches the fundamentals. The only thing to worry about, in my opinion, is European banks. That's that's the only thing to really be concerned about is the, is the situation of banks in Europe. That is that if there's going to be a problem, that's where it's going to come from, and that's where things are going to change um, on a fundamental basis. Uh, but at the moment, we'll just have to keep our ear to the ground. Charts seem reasonable. Everybody's propping up these markets. There's lots of reasons to assume that it will continue to go up. Until further notice, I'm not talking new all-time highs. I'm talking bit by bit, day after day. It looks like we're going to be chipping into new highs. Uh, and then it'll, it will start to get overheated. It will want to consolidate. And that is definitely going to happen. And it will probably take a little bit of time for that to that consolidation to finish. Similar to the way that we, we pumped up in 2019. And then consolidated for a good six months before you finally bottomed out and showed some signs of recovery. So something similar to that is, is likely to occur this time around again you can't just keep going up and up and up and up and up forever there will be a long drawn out consolidation that and then that's that's probably going to coincide with the way that the dixie looks as well and dixie again is just the opposite of the of the euro but that's why we look at the euro but the dixie will want to uh to, to have a run at some point but at the moment you know we've got one drive of bullish divergence ever so slightly not enough to talk about we're about to incur a a, 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 um, a, a dump signal but scraping these lows the closer we get to one you know 101 100 expect a sort of a bounce around there but you know the dollar is going to be beaten up hard because the ETB say they're going to do 50 basis points the Fed's probably going to do 25 or pause um yeah you know, they're not going to do 50 again they're just not going to do it um it just won't happen um, so yeah just expect the continuation of what we've spoken about this entire time to continue until we reach something that we can hold on to on their own charts we can take their charts seriously once again lovely stuff anyway i'll leave it with you there thank you for watching feel free to join the patreon links in the description below otherwise have a nice day take it easy